it's Sandy Parker and welcome to Crafting for Almost Everyone. Well today I'm going to show you a couple of techniques on ways that you can iron things to make your crafting work better and one of them is going to be on embossing and the other is going to be adhering a napkin that I'm going to be using on another project to cardstock. So I hope you'll stay tuned. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to work on our ironed embossed and I wanted to show you the stamp sets I'm using first. I'm using for my sentiment MFT all occasions and I think I'm going to be using, um, I think it says sending hugs. I like that sentiment because you can use it for just about anything. And then we're going to be using a Simon Says stamp set called Floral Bliss and I'm using this great big um, floral design. I'm going to put it in the bottom, the top and the bottom. And I'm going to be making this so that I'm using, oop, clear emboss. Let me open that and then close it back up. And I need to use my brush that'll just throw a ton of powder everywhere. In case you wondered why you do that, you don't want your embossing powder to stick to everything. You only want it to stick where you are stamping it. So when you put that powder, that was um, baby powder, but you can use cornstarch. You can put it in a couple of nylons, a, a little like um, uh, knee highs, and uh, double them over and that will work and then glue it shut with by just knotting it. That's been my system for many years. If you've watched my videos for a long time, you've seen me use it a million times, but um, it's a really nice tool. I'm going to stamp this one more time because it is really intricate and I want to make sure that we get every little bit of it inked. I'm going to use my arm on it. If you have any stamping tool and you have hand issues where you can't, you don't have a lot of strength in the, your arm or your hand, I recommend using your forearm and just pushing on it. I've used my foot and uh, that works too, but I'm always afraid by rubbing my foot over it, I'm going to have an issue. So, like breaking it, I mean. I'm going to turn it around and we'll go on to the other side. I'm just going to put in a piece of paper here and stamp it with some black ink and then we'll just, you only really need the outline of this just to make sure you get the whole thing when you make a mask. Um, all you do from here is you cut it out and I'm only going to cut out this top section. I'm not going to cut out the bottom. So let me do that and I'll be right back. I made my mask and I put three of these temporary glue dots, they're removable, and I love them because of that for things like this. So what you do is you're going to line it up. I line mine up at the top to make sure it's all where it's supposed to be. That's a little off. Just making sure those little top pieces are all correct. And you hold push those glue dots back down and we're good to go and let's see if this is in the same place as it was. I put in another piece that I wanted to come out the side which is this little branch so I'm just going to stamp some Versamark ink on that I put my sentiment in there but I'm not doing anything to it yet because I want to decide later if I want it uh, to be embossed before I iron it or after I iron it because when you iron it it takes the um, it takes the height out and I'm thinking I might not want the height to come out of mine if that makes sense. Put this on that side. Now since the mask is there that will protect it so that this floral image is the is the closest to you when you look at it and the things I'm adding will be further away and the reason I explained it that way is because if you're ever doing this where you want to make sure that you're doing it in the right order just remember the first thing you mask is going to be the furthest the closest to you when you um, are done 
I hope that made sense. So now what we're going to do is we're going to take our clear embossing powder and we're going to take our mask off. You're going to keep this mask with your stamps forever because you don't want to ever do it twice. Trust me, that's more work than anybody wants to do more than once. Okay, so I'm going to just take my clear embossing powder and I put it in this big Ziploc tub and the reason I do that is because I have a this baby no it's from like NyQuil cup and then I can dump a whole bunch on and then put it back into my pot just making sure I cover one side first and then of course I have that paper underneath to catch the rest and I've already screwed that up and missed it so these things happen to me all the time why I don't know I don't know you want to make sure you don't stick your hands on anything you've already put embossing powder on because if you do you've already kind of screwed it up a little bit the secret to heat embossing is to make sure that your gun is really hot before you take it to your paper because if it's not you have a better chance of having issues with um, scorching your paper or burning it completely setting it on fire um, not might take too long to heat emboss and if it does take too long then the problem you have at that point is that um, you'll not know when you've done enough and you'll end up having the embossing powder will flatten out and you'll think to yourself why is my embossing powder flat and the reason is is you did um, you heated it too long and you can tell there was some ink on these little flowers when I um, picked it out of the container it was already it, I didn't clean it again I cleaned the other one but I didn't clean that one so now we're going to color it and I'm going to use Copic markers so let me grab the well they're not Copic markers they're alcohol based markers and mine are called touch five markers and let me grab those and I'll be right back so these are the colors I've chosen for my coloring I'm going to Scoop them up so we can read the numbers of them. In case you have these markers, 23, 24, and 14 in the orange family, 2 and 10 in the red family, 145, 147, and 83 in the lavender slash purple family, 172 and 43 in the green family, 35, 41, and 142 in the yellow gold category. And I think that's all of them. So I'm going to set those off to the side. But I was thinking my center flowers, I wanted to make, I don't think this is dark red enough. I'm going to go with a different red. So this is 15 that we're going to go with.
the rest is all leaves, so I'm pretty sure you can figure out how I'm going to do those. I'm going to go back over those leaves to make sure I clean them up a little bit, but I just wanted to get you this far in the process. And then I'm going to do the other side, and I'll be back. So here we have it all painted, and the next step is our ironing. And the, what, what the ironing is going to do is it's going to take off the raised layer of the embossing powder. So what you want to do is I put a couple of sheets of typing paper, scrap paper, and a couple of dishcloths underneath, and then I'm going to put some more scrap paper on top, and again, this is just your basic scrap paper. There's no typing on the back. There's only typing on this side so that I can make sure I don't make a mess of it. And I have my iron on a dry setting and it's not um, it's not got any um, mist. So that's important. I'm going to pull that one out and get another one. Maybe my alcohol ink isn't dry enough not a problem. We're just going to keep going back over it until we remove the embossing ink. See how I did. Perfect. If you look at this, you can see that it kind of makes it look distressed and it takes off the raised embossed look. Now, I'm going to show you the second thing that I'm, uh, the second project I had in mind for ironing. And that is, I'm going to make a box card, you know the ones that everybody's made and I still haven't, where it, it's like um, it opens up and you have things on the top. Well, I wanted mine to look like a carnival or a, or a um, fair, basically. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my napkin, this is just a basic napkin, and you're going to take a piece of washi tape and you're going to put it on the edge like that. Make sure it's well adhered and then you're going to lift like this, hopefully you can see this, and it pulls it off like butter. I don't know about the rest of you, but until I learned how to do this, I could not get these apart to save my life. So there's a trick for you that'll keep you happy for a long time. You can use this other sheet for another cleanup, and you know I'll, I always have that problem. And all you're going to want to do, I'm going to take the side that doesn't have, oh, I forgot to put my paper down. I'm going to take the side that doesn't have writing on it. See this side has writing? I don't want that. So I'm going to take this and cut it in half and because I want all of these uh, stripe layers I'm going to cut those off too. Okay so what I have here are three of these panels and if I don't have enough I'll fake it. I'm going to put a piece of paper underneath it just to keep it nice and clean on my thing. I just want to make sure that I don't have any, you know, like wrinkly parts. The edges, I want the, the sides to be straight. So we have everybody ironed. So the next thing I did was I took regular plastic wrap. This is not any kind of special plastic wrap, just your regular old stuff. And I laid it on top of my cardstock so that the cardstock has a flat layer on it. And I wrapped it around underneath just so it would stay because I have a fan going and you know how that goes when you got a fan going the whole the whole project goes to poop I'm gonna lay my napkins face up I'm gonna put my stripes together like that your goal here is to make sure that they're kinda lined up oh don't go anywhere and then I'm gonna put piece of paper right there. I'm just trying to line these bad boys up so they stay together. And then I'm going to put my extra napkin over it just so I don't burn my, uh, I, I don't want to ruin the bottom of my iron with the, the plastic wrap. Keeping in mind, I don't use that for anything. 
You're going to have to do this for a while. Our goal here is to make sure all the edges are glued down. Okay, so let's see how our edges are doing. If they don't completely stick down, I don't fret about that because I know that I can always use a little bit of glue or Mod Podge or something to make them stay where I want them to. Ooh, that one's not going to stay at all. Come on, buddy. All you have to do at this point then, if everything is stuck down, that corner needs a little bit of work. Oops. If all your edges are um, in place, stuck down, then you're in great shape. All you have to do is cut cut the edges off that you that are excess. I just hope I have enough for my project. I might have to do a second page. There. See, a lot of your plastic wrap will come out off on your extra pages. If you have to, I mean if you feel you have to, you can always put another piece of plastic wrap under here. Good thing I don't use this for clothes, huh? Okay, there we have our paper for our uh, county fair themed box and we'll be doing that video next. So let's get back and finish our card real quick. Alright, next step we're going to put our greeting on and our greeting is already in place. I have this little dot that I liked. I haven't decided about what I'm going to do with that. You know I like a few layers of inking as well. It makes me happy when I have a really dark sentiment in the center. That looks pretty good. I think the next thing we want to do is um, I want to put glossy accents on it. I know that kind of defeats the purpose of uh, what I've already done, but I thought it'd be kind of fun to do this if I can get my glossy accents to come out of the ball. I just want to do the flowers, the center flowers. When you do this glossy accents, you have to have a good amount on there if you want it to be 3D, because if you don't, you're going to have just kind of a little bit of a raised look, and we're going for a big raised look on these. Okay, and then we'll do some of these. So in the end, all I did additionally was I took a little teeny tiny violet stamp that was in the same stamp set, this one right here, if you can see that. I took that and I stamped it all over to fill in and then I took a peg stamp that's this, that's a little leafy frond and I'm sorry I don't have the name of it but I'm sure if you searched leaf or um, yeah, leaf or branch, you'd, you'd come up with this on pegstamps.com. I love this little stamp. It's just perfect. It looks right no matter how you stamp it, and it really filled in. If you can see, all of the embossing that was raised is now gone, but it still has the look that's left behind. And then I used those, that glossy accents on just the green, the yellow, and the center flowers on the top and the bottom and I really liked it. I didn't like my sentiment so I put this happy birthday one over it that goes to the edges of the card and then of course I stamped the back and I decorated my envelope with some of the same flowers that were in the set and there you have it. I hope that you learned a little bit about how to use your iron in your crafts and how to use an appliance that we probably don't use much anymore but in the meantime 
uh, it comes out with a cool technique with this and also we've got our paper to make my next project with and I'm going to be getting on that as soon as this video is over. So with that in mind, I hope that you'll give this video a thumbs up and subscribe. Please tell your friends about me on social media because you know I love that. And thanks so much for watching. Bye-bye.